and welcome to the video. So we're gonna take things in a little bit of a different direction today. This is the Red Magic 8 Pro and it is a gaming smartphone. It actually might be one of the best gaming smartphones that you can buy, but I also have to be really careful whenever I make that statement because this is also the first gaming smartphone that we have reviewed here on the channel. So I've been using it for a while. I really, really like it. It has some very unique strengths that it brings to the table and I've had a blast. I mean, this is a segment of smartphone that I feel like we need to do more reviews of. It's just harder to get hands-on phones like this than it is your Samsungs, your Apples, your Google Pixels, things like that. But this is an awesome phone. So let's get into the details. This is the Red Magic 8 Pro. So when you think about gaming phones, this obviously isn't like the first by any means. I remember a while back, Razer launched a gaming phone. Is that phone still around? No? Okay. Um, okay, so, so no on the Razer phone, but that was definitely a thing. I promise you, I remember that. Uh, Asus also has a very popular ROG or Republic of Gamers smartphone. And I feel like that one is, I would say like the most mainstream, if a gaming phone can actually be mainstream of smartphones out there, it's super popular. And I've seen videos of it all over the place. Um, and even phones from much more mainstream companies like Samsung, when you look at the S23 Ultra, it's very powerful, it's very capable. And I've even seen commercials here in the States of the S23 Ultra's gaming capability of like two kids in an airport playing asphalt competing against each other or something like that. So there are some phones out there or companies out there that definitely do produce phones that try to, let's say, do it all. Like it's a great smartphone, but at the same time, you can also use it for gaming. It's a completely different story whenever a smartphone, a lot of its core elements are designed specifically for gaming. Like they'll basically take it to where it's not just the capability of the processor that enables it for gaming. There are actually more features and more really cool things built in that lead to a unique and awesome experience with this smartphone. The first thing I noticed when I started using this phone was that not only is the enclosure really thick, especially compared to like newer age smartphones or modern smartphones, right? But it also has some weight to it, which I actually really like. The phone itself is super boxy. There's no like subtle curves or, you know, edges or anything like that. It looks absolutely fantastic. And the overall thickness of the phone serves for multiple reasons. So on the back of the phone, especially if you get one of these see-through designs, you'll find that there is actually a built-in cooling fan that is functional. And depending on what you're doing with the phone, there's also a set of RGB lights, which is fantastic for gamers, obviously, because if you're using RGB, that takes your performance up like at least 10 points. There are vents on both sides of the phone that are functional for actual air cooling, which is just so sick to see on a smartphone. There are capacitive triggers. So whenever you're using this phone in landscape mode, if you are playing a game that is actually optimized to work on this phone, you can program those triggers. The first thing that came to my mind was if you're playing a shooter game like Call of Duty, or I think PUBG is one that works really well on this phone. You can program the triggers for like aiming down sight and shooting, which is just so wild to see on a smartphone. On the top of the phone, there's a headphone jack, which is something that I haven't seen in such a long time, but whenever it comes to gaming in particular, if you're going to be gaming on a smartphone and you're using a pair of wireless buds, chances are you might run into some latency issues. You might do something on the phone and it might take like a quarter to a half second to register in your wireless buds. So you can run some wired buds to these phones, which again is something that we haven't seen in a really long time. And internally, 6,000 milliamp hour battery, which is just gigantic, paired with Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, best Android mobile phone processor for 2023. And in this particular color that I have, the uh, titanium color, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage. Great for downloading large games that have a lot of resources you have to download in addition to them. 16 gigs of RAM is going to be great to play multiple games. So this phone is an absolute performance powerhouse and it reflects in the way that the phone is built, how thick it is, and the amount of heft that it brings whenever you hold it. 
From a display perspective, we're looking at a 6.8 inch AMOLED panel. And as far as like resolution goes, it's slightly above full HD. So like uh, we'll call it full HD plus. And like I said, it's AMOLED. So colors are rich, they're vibrant, they're saturated. It looks fantastic. It's the same type of thing that I've mentioned on our S23 review where it's HD, but whenever you look at it, it like you can't really tell it apart unless you start getting super into the pixels between like a quad HD panel and like a full HD plus panel. It's a fantastic looking display. There is an in-display fingerprint sensor and it is optical. So, you know, standard like what we've seen on a OnePlus, right? Um, it's fast, it's accurate, got some really cool animations and things like that as well. And one other thing about the display, of course it comes with the 120 hertz refresh rate. And I noticed in the settings that you can scale it down, not just down to 60, you can also scale it down to 90. So you can do 60, 90, or 120, which is super cool. And I'm not sure how many people this might help based on like how many of you are watching that might own this phone. But I noticed whenever I was using it, whenever you wake the display, sometimes it's a little low until the auto brightness kicks in in terms of brightness. I noticed that whenever the brightness was relatively dim, it would automatically scale back down to 60 hertz. On some smartphones, there's typically an option in the display settings to turn it off. On this particular smartphone, you have to dive into the developer options to turn it off. Again, I don't know how many people that's actually going to help, but I figured I'd mention it anyways. And another interesting part about this phone, it comes with an under display selfie camera. The quality is, it's under display selfie camera quality, but what it leads to is a really, really seamless display experience. It looks fantastic. You hardly even tell it's there with the type of wallpaper that I have. I think it just looks incredible. And that combined with the way that the rest of this phone looks, I honestly think this is one of the best, if not the best looking smartphone that's dropped in 2023 so far. We obviously have a ton more phones coming down in the landscape, but this phone is just super sharp. And the way they pulled off the display, it's great for gaming and from just a display quality perspective in general. And as far as software goes, this phone is running Android 13 with Red Magic OS 6 on top. And as you're using it, especially if you have used a phone like a Google Pixel before, you can tell that this is a heavily customized version of Android. But I think to a certain extent, it kind of needs to be. There's so much on this phone that you can customize. There's no way I can cover it all, but just some of the stuff that I've noticed while I was using it. Adjusting display refresh rate, but having like three different refresh rates to choose from. There are options in here to adjust the settings for the fan, how often you want the fan on, whether or not you want it to launch automatically with specific apps. Do you want the lights on the fan going? Uh, what speed do you want the fan on? Normal speed, high speed. There are settings to adjust the RGB lights on the back to be for various things. Whenever you're on a phone call, what color shows? Does it flash? Does it pulse? Does it breathe? Is it just statically showing? Whenever you're playing a game, what colors show? What do those animations look like? Is the fan on whenever you're playing a game? Whenever you're charging the phone, does the fan turn on? What kind of lights do you have on when you're playing audio? What kind of lights? When you're in a game, there's a dedicated game settings panel that you can bring out from either the left or right side of the display. And there's so many different settings that you can toggle on and off. You can overclock the processor for better performance. You can throw it in an eco mode for a balance between playing the game and conserving battery life. There's dedicated options to like record your screen, connect it to a dock and connect it to a keyboard and mouse so you can play the game that way. I mean, there's so many different customizable features in this phone. So I kind of expected the operating system to be somewhat deviated from what would be considered stock Android in 2023, <clears throat> but it wasn't a bad software experience by any means. And there's just so many gaming related things that you can change about this phone. Again, it's just such a unique and, and fun. And in my experience, because this is the first gaming phone we reviewed on the channel, it's a, it's a really refreshing and, and really fun experience for the geek in me because I am a pretty heavy gamer. So I, I, I enjoy that aspect of this phone a lot. Now let's talk about what I feel is probably the weakest aspect of the phone, and that's going to be the camera setup on the back. And I mean, 
what is a phone intended to do, right? The phone is intended to run mobile games at very high frame rates for very long periods of time. I mean, for goodness sake, man, the phone has two vents that bring in cool air from one side, run it over the processor, and use a fan to push the warm air out of the other side. But let's talk about the cameras anyways. You have three on the back, a 50 megapixel wide angle, an eight megapixel ultra wide angle, and a two megapixel macro. That's a little bit of an interesting choice. But in terms of camera performance, I think what would really sum up the camera performance here is it's cameras that you would expect to find on a, on a phone that is strictly dedicated for gaming. It's not gonna be like, you're not buying this phone to take good quality pictures. Can you take acceptable pictures? Yes, it's a camera system that'll get you by. Even the recording capabilities are like 4K 30, 4K 60. You can even bump it up to 8K recording capabilities. But in terms of overall quality, it's not going to be anywhere close to like flagship level smartphones that have flagship level camera systems, but again, that's not what the phone was intended to do. If you're buying this phone because you think it might have an ability to take fantastic pictures, you're, you're probably not buying it for the right reason. From an execution perspective, the cameras get by, but this phone still absolutely accomplishes what it's set out to do, and that's to be great at gaming. And it's also missing a couple of other things. No wireless charging and no official IP rating. But one interesting thing that I noticed was that when you pop out the SIM tray, so I could put in my SIM card, there is like a red seal around it, which implies that there might be a certain level of water resistance added to the phone, but you use that information in your own particular way, however you would like to. But either way, the Red Magic 8 Pro was so much fun. It was so refreshing to kind of switch it up and review a phone that is geared not necessarily towards like mainstream flagship you're trying to get this phone into as many hands as possible this is a phone that is geared towards gamers right and and for someone like myself that like all throughout my early teenage like even now through my adult age i still game frequently with friends and it's a hobby that i really enjoy doing a phone like this has some some serious appeal on it i don't do anything crazy whenever it comes to mobile phone gaming i play cod mobile on this phone and i played dragon ball z dokkan battle on it it obviously ran both of those games just fine but the phone has such a cool factor and it's so unique especially if you get it in this titanium color it's so unique it's got so many cool features about it and quite honestly it makes me want to get the Asus ROG phone and review that as well. If you enjoyed a review of this kind, uh, like for gaming phones basically, let me know in the comment section, maybe leave a like on the video or something like that. And if we feel like, you know, there's more interest in it, I have no problem getting a ROG phone in the studio and reviewing that as well because this was a ton of fun. Now, as far as pricing and colors go, there are three colors. The matte color starts at $650. And then there are two like colors with this see-through design to the back. They're going to be void and they're going to be titanium. Both of those phones are $799, I believe. And um, I think either way, whichever one you go with, your big discrepancies are going to be RAM and storage. That's what's going to create the difference in price. If you are into mobile gaming and you want a phone that is super, super unique and stands out and has a very, very interesting, strong feature set, this is, I mean, this is just so much fun. Like this is an awesome smartphone. So either way, I hope you enjoyed the review as much as I enjoyed using this phone. And uh, as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. The first gaming smartphone that we have reviewed on the channel, it was really exciting. I had a blast using this phone and I absolutely love it because it has its own unique strengths that it builds to the table, builds to the table. Let's redo that.